Right of return, 45 minutes, 30 seconds. The Avro Vulcan. This is one of the most recognizable post-World War II British aircraft to ever be flown. Its delta wing and color schemes make it a beautiful aircraft that still looks somehow futuristic today. On its first flight in 1952, it was something seemingly right out of science fiction. As such, the Avro Vulcan has made a few appearances in cinema. The Vulcan fits right into the 1956 space science fiction Satellite in the Sky, making a brief appearance. The aircraft further plays a significant role in Thunderball from 1965, where the production team was granted special access to the aircraft for filming. Commandant, would you care to change places with the co-pilot? Better view up here. I'll be delighted to. In the video game universe, the Vulcan has inspired aircraft designs for a mission in Grand Theft Auto. And in the racing game Forza Horizon 4, you can actually race a fictional Vulcan variant. In the real world, the Avro Vulcan, the first Delta Wing bomber, was presented to the public at Farnborough Air Airshow in 1952. The aircraft dazzled the crowd with its design and maneuvers, with it being described as rolling like a fighter, despite its size. This was an aircraft that when it came out, and perhaps even today, when flown above cities or towns, it would stop traffic, due to looking like something from outer space. Adding to the attraction were the engines in the Vulcan, which had their own unique and distinct noise, due to the air intake arrangement. The Avro Vulcan was operated by the Royal Air Force from 1956 until 1984. Aircraft manufacturer A.V. Rowan Company, Avro, designed the Vulcan in response to specification B-3546, which called for a nuclear-capable aircraft to operate out of reach of enemy air defenses, while being able to strike targets from British and Allied bases. It needed to be able to strike the Soviet Union, while remaining as far away from Soviet air capabilities as possible. The Vulcan was one of three British V-bombers produced. The Vulcan was considered the most technically advanced, hence the riskiest option. The V-bombers were the Royal Air Force's aircraft during the 1950s and 60s that comprised the United Kingdom's Strategic Nuclear Strike Force, known officially as the V-Force, or Bomber Command Main Force. Perfecting the Delta Wing took some time, but for the team at Avro the design was an ingenious solution to reduce overall weight to meet the requirements of the project. The wings could hold significant fuel despite a short span. There was no need for a separate tail surface, and they didn't have to problem solve designing the massive and heavy wings required for a more conventional design. Several reduced scale aircraft designated Avro 707s were produced to test and refine the Delta Wing design principles. The Vulcan's production was to be state of the art. Advanced systems were used for testing, using new methods of computer analysis, and a full scale mock up simulator was built to test stress on the aircraft under conditions of flight. To test pressure on the extreme altitudes the aircraft would be flying at, the pressurized cabin would be tested in a water tank. Every window was tested to failure. Despite methodical testing, one of the one-third scale 707 prototypes crashed due to an air brake issue, causing a low-speed stall. However, all flight characteristics remained excellent, and the first full-scale Avro flight in August 1952 was a success. Though tragically, the same aircraft had crashed during an air show at RAF Cyverston, Nottinghamshire in 1958, due to a structural failure of the aircraft's main spar and wing structure. This was largely believed to be an issue with the prototype's limits, but the investigation was poorly handled and lacked transparency. The Vulcan B-1 was first delivered to the RAF in 1956. Deliveries of the improved Vulcan B-2 started in 1960. The B-2 featured more powerful engines, a larger wing, an improved electrical system, and electronic countermeasures, and many were modified to accept the Blue Steel missile. This was a British-made, air-launched, rocket-propelled, nuclear-armed standoff missile, built to arm the V-bomber force, though ultimately nuclear gravity bombs were the more common nuclear option, due to their quickness to ready. As part of the V-force, the Vulcan was the backbone of the United Kingdom's airborne nuclear deterrent during much of the Cold War. From 1962 onwards, two jets in every RAF bomber base were to be armed with nuclear weapons and on standby permanently, under the principle of quick reaction alert. Vulcans on QRA were to be airborne within four minutes of receiving an alert, as this was identified as the amount of time between warning of a Soviet nuclear strike being launched 
and it arriving in Britain. Although the Vulcan was typically armed with nuclear weapons, it could also carry out conventional bombing missions, which it did in Operation Blackbuck during the Falcon's War between the United Kingdom and Argentina in 1982. The Blackbuck operations were seven extremely long-range ground attack missions conducted by the RAF against Argentine positions in the Falcon Islands. The raids involved Vulcan bombers flying from the Ascension Islands, 12,200 kilometers, a 16-hour round trip, to bomb the Falcon Islands airstrip, to prevent Argentine aircraft from using it and further threatening the British Navy set to liberate the island. The raids were the longest range bombing in history at the time, requiring a daunting logistical effort, as 11 tankers were required for in-air refueling for two Vulcans in order for them to make the trip. Of the five Black Buck raids flown to completion, three were against Stanley Airfield's runway and operational facilities, while the other two were anti-radar missions using Shrike missiles against long-range 3D radar in the Port Stanley area. The Vulcans carried either 21 1,000-pound bombs internally or two or four Shrike anti-radar missiles externally. Many of the bombs arming Vulcans were of the World War II era, dropped almost no differently than they would have been some 40 years ago. The raids were considered a great logistical accomplishment for the RAF, with no losses, though one Vulcan had to land in Brazil due to a fuel shortage. The Vulcan had no defensive weaponry, initially relying on high-speed, high-altitude flight to evade interception. The cannons you see on the Grand Theft Auto variant are just there for in-game fun. The Vulcan B-2 had a maximum speed of 644 miles per hour, or 1,037 kilometers an hour, and a maximum range of 4,600 miles, or 7,400 kilometers. In 1961, the Vulcans proved their effectiveness in penetrating American air defenses at 56,000 feet, in war games simulating a Soviet attack on the US, known as Sky Shield. The upgraded Vulcans were a success. Chaff dispensers and electronic countermeasures were employed by the B-1, designated B-1A and B-2 from around 1960 to counter the growing sophistication of Soviet air defenses. An ironic change to low-level tactics was made in the mid-1960s. The aircraft's best defense would come from now flying under radar rather than above the range of ground defenses. In the mid-1970s, nine Vulcans were adapted for maritime radar reconnaissance operations, redesignated as B-2MRR. In the final years of service, six Vulcans were converted to the K-2 tanker configuration for aerial refueling. Out of the 134 Vulcans produced, 19 survive today, with three on display in the United States and one in Canada. The Vulcan remains one of the greatest attractions and crowd pleasers at British air shows and museums. For the filming of Thunderball, a full-size replica was constructed just for the production. The Vulcan's use was considered so iconic to the film that the one full-size replica built for the production was blown up with dynamite, not to be used again. Its barely recognizable remains are now a dive site near Nassau in the Bahamas. The real aircraft used in the film, early B-1As, were also withdrawn from service and scrapped by 1968, so the film truly has some unique footage. All right, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this brief on the Avro Vulcan. May you live long and prosper, and we'll see you in the next one. Live long, Tipao, and prosper. Live long and prosper, Spock.